episode of English Cooking, where I teach you English through cooking. Guys, today we are going to have a tea party. I'm so excited about this. Look at that cute little teapot here. And I got two little teacups. So I am excited to have a tea party with you, my friend. Are you my best friend? Let me know down in the comments if you are my best friend. I hope so. So guys, today we're going to have tea and biscuits. And so I bought these biscuits from the store. Now before I show you these biscuits, let me ask you a question. What is a biscuit? Let me know in the comments. What do you think is a biscuit? Well, in many countries around the world, the word biscuit means like a cookie, right? Something kind of sweet with sugar. You, you, maybe you dunk the biscuit in your tea and you have the, you know, or if your guests come over, you serve them a plate of some biscuits, right? Well, if you are from England or somewhere in the in the British Empire, like like the former British Empire, I guess no, I shouldn't say that because Canada is in the Canada's in the former British Empire and we don't call those biscuits. We call those cookies. Okay. If you're in a country, I was thinking of a country like maybe India or Pakistan or that that area, if you use the word biscuit, you know. You know when you go to the store and you see all those different kind of like, you know, you can buy all kinds of different, you know, we call them cookies, but you might call them biscuits, right? In British English, they call those biscuits. But in Canada and the US, the word biscuit means something else, okay? We would call, what you would call biscuits, we call those cookies, right? So, you know, if your guests come over, you might you might offer them some some cookies, either some homemade cookies. <clears throat> Got something in my throat. Either some homemade cookies or some store-bought cookies. Which do you prefer? Do you prefer homemade cookies or store-bought cookies? You know, there's all kinds of different flavors of cookies if you buy them from a store. Like the packet, the ones that come in like a packet or whatever. Um, but guys, in Canada and the US, biscuit means something else. Well, first I'll show you the I'll show you the um, the packaging here. It says blueberry tea biscuits. Okay, blueberry tea biscuits. So what is a tea biscuit? A tea biscuit is kind of like in the in in the UK they have these things called scones. I think some people say scone. You can pronounce it both ways, I think. Don't quote me on that. Scone or scone. It's kind of like this. It's a tea biscuit. Okay, so the word biscuit... Ooh, guys, look at that. Okay, so there is a biscuit. You know, look how thick that is. It's like, it's like flour. Almost looks kind of like bread, right? So, like, like, look at that, okay? That is a biscuit. Now, biscuits in our culture, Canada and the US, like North America, biscuits can either be something you eat with your tea, so it might be kind of sweet, it might have like some blueberries or some raisins in it or whatever, but biscuits can also be just a like a, a main course kind of a dish if you're eating something and you have a biscuit it, it will be kind of like um just some kind of flour maybe, maybe like um i don't know what kind of I'm not, I'm not sure what kind of flour i've never made actually made biscuits maybe normal flour okay but it's going to look something like this kind of like a round about that size, right? Rat kind of round and thick, maybe like an inch thick. And it's just going to be um, plain. If you're eating it with, like with a main course, um, I don't know, what, what, do, what food would people eat biscuits with? Um, for some reason, the, the, 
the food sloppy joes came to my mind i'm not sure if people eat biscuits with sloppy joes um have you ever had sloppy joes maybe at one time one of these lessons i should make a video about sloppy joes let me know in the comments if you would like to hear sloppy joes and guys if you didn't know that this is a biscuit give me a like on this video i'm always teaching you new things here at mad english tv so if you are a new subscriber welcome here if you're not subscribed yet, well, you're missing out on learning a ton of English. I love teaching you guys new things in English. Right? So if you're drinking tea, the, the, these um, biscuits will maybe be sweet, maybe have raisins or blueberries or something. But if you're eating some other food, your main main meal, and you have, have biscuits, they're going to be... Um, they're not going to have raisins or anything. It's just going to be plain and they kind of taste salty and really dry. Okay, so a lot of people, when they eat biscuits, they kind of cut the biscuit in, uh, they'll, they'll cut the biscuit like this and they'll put, um, they'll put butter on it and then they'll be, you know, they'll just eat their, eat their food and eat the, the biscuit, right? So it's kind of like a, it's, it's the, Biscuits kind of go along with the main meal, unless they're this kind of biscuit, which you would drink with your tea, right? So most biscuits are kind of dry, um, which is why people put butter, some people put butter on the biscuit. Let me know, have you ever had a biscuit? Biscuits always look like this, okay? So the word biscuit in Canada and the US is always something this size. Right, so biscuits aren't those small little ones that you buy, you buy from a store with the sugar and like, you know, whatever they are, right? So, uh, like for example, Oreos, you know, Oreos, some people would call those biscuits. We call them cookies, Oreo cookies, right? All those different ones that you can buy from the store, right? You can dunk them in your milk or your tea or something like that, right? So guys, now you know what a biscuit is. Now let's, I guess the first thing I should do is turn on the kettle, heat the water, right? So look at this, here's my kettle. Now this is not an electric kettle. Most people these days have electric kettles, right? Where you plug it in or whatever. This is a stove top kettle. So I'm gonna put it on the stove and let it heat up until this starts to whistle. When this whistles, then I know the water is boiling. Okay, so just uh, hang on a sec. We're going to put that on there. Now, maybe I should, I think the best way to eat these would be to warm them up. I just bought these from the store. So they're, they're kind of, they're not warm, right? Now I have a toaster. If you have some sort of a, maybe like a toaster oven, a toaster oven is just a small little to like oven that you put, you can put toast or other things like this kind of thing, right? And you can see my red toaster. That's actually like a real toaster where you put the two slices of bread in both sides and then you, you know, you wait for a few seconds and it pops up, right? So maybe I could put these like on top of the, the toaster. Well, maybe I'll just do that just, just to make them a little bit warm. But, um, but, but before I do that, I would like to ask you guys a question. Do you prefer tea bags Ooh, yeah. peppermint tea do you prefer tea bags or loose leaf tea okay so this is called loose leaf anytime the the leaves are kind of loose any any kind of tea could be green tea black tea peppermint this is peppermint these are peppermint leaves okay so any kind of tea kind of can come in two forms. It can come in a bag, a tea bag, or it can come as a loose leaf. Let me know which you prefer. Do you prefer tea bags or loose leaf? Well, I don't know which I prefer. So we, you know, which would you like to, which would you like to drink today? Um, maybe we should just, uh, uh, let's go, let's decide this way. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, catch the tiger by the toe. If he hollers, let him go. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. 
All right, we're going with the tea bag, guys. So let's uh, let's pop a tea bag right in here. Ooh, that's gonna be great. And we're gonna wait for my water to boil, the kettle to. So we're gonna wait to listen for that whistle. And in the meantime, I'm gonna just gonna pop this on the toaster just to kind of warm it up a bit. You know, it's kind of nice to eat something a little bit warm. All right, let's let's see if that warms it up just a little bit. You know, get the butter on there and stuff. Hey guys, I was also thinking we could put a little bit of jam on there. I don't know how this will taste, but you know what kind of jam this is? This is rhubarb jam. Now, this might be a new a new thing for you, um, but but here in Canada, people use rhubarb. People grow rhubarb actually. Um, do you know what rhubarb is? Let me know if you know what it is. Have you ever heard of rhubarb? Do you have rhubarb in your country? So rhubarb is like a. People kind of treat it like a fruit. Okay, now I don't know if it's, I don't think it's a fruit. It's a plant, okay? It's got these long red stalks. You know, of what a stalk is, kind of like a celery. Celery grows in a stalk, right? Celery stalks. Well, the, rhubarb also grows in these like, I mean the ru rhubarb plants can be huge. They've got these big green leaves on the end of the stalk, okay? So imagine there's a red, a red stalk, and then a big green leaf on top of the stalk, and you've got, the whole plant has like maybe, I don't know, 10 or 20 stalks, and then the leaves, so the whole bush, like it's like a, a rhubarb, I don't know if we use the word bush, we, we would say a rhubarb plant, probably. Whole rhubarb plant can be huge. And then what you do is you just cut off one of the stalks from the, you know, from down here, and then you cut off the the leaf. I don't know if the leaf has any use. I don't I don't know if uh I heard my toaster, guys. I don't know if the if um the the rhubarb leaves are used for anything, but the stalks are used especially for jams and for pies. Like if you come to Canada here and you go to a, a, a grocery store, you will be able to find a strawberry rhubarb pie. Okay, so the pie is made from strawberries and rhubarb, like the filling of the pie is made from strawberries and rhubarb. Okay, so that's what rhubarb rhubarb is. Now it's, it's kind of spelt a bit weird. It's got an H, like a rhubarb, but the H is silent. It's just rhubarb okay so you don't need to say the h so have you ever tasted rhubarb before rhubarb is is kind of sour it's a sour it, it, it's like when people don't i shouldn't say it because when i was a kid i did eat rhubarb just raw you can just munch on it it's sour right um, so what people usually do with rhubarb is they'll they'll make it sweet, right? They'll add it to a jam or they'll mix it with strawberries or something that's sweet. So that, that's kind of like the sweet and sour. Okay, so if you buy a, a strawberry rhubarb pie, it will be sweet and sour, a bit of sour. It's kind of kind of nice, right? So this jam, right? This is just rhubarb jam. So it's not. It doesn't have strawberries or anything, but it does have sugar, right? So you can see on the, I can see here on the ingredients, this jam has four ingredients. Okay, it has rhubarb, sugar, water, and pectin, right? Pectin is the stuff that makes it thick. So let's, let's open it up here. Ah, oh, can't open it, guys. Ah, got it. <laughs> All right, so. Mmm, that smells good. Okay, so um, look at that. That's what it looks like, guys. So it's, uh, it, you know, the, the thing about rhubarb too is the rhubarb is kind of stringy because like it's, it's a stalk, right? And the stalk is made up of like these little strings. It's kind of like celery. 
except celery is a vegetable and rhubarb is used like a fruit. Now, like I said, is rhubarb a fruit? I mean, it's, it's, it's like, I don't know what category rhubarb would be in. Because a fruit is something that grows on like a, 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 a tree or a plant or something, but rhubarb is the stalk. I mean, what other fruits in, can you think of a fruit that is a stalk? I can't think of any fruits. Like there are some stalks that are vegetables, like celery, for example, but rhubarb is treated like a fruit. I mean, people don't eat rhubarb like a vegetable. All right, celery is a vegetable. Cucumbers are vegetable. People don't make jam out of cucumbers or out of celery, right? Or of tomatoes. But for rhubarb, they use it for sweet things, even though it's not sweet. I don't know who came up with, who, who I don't know who the first person was who used rhubarb in a jam or a pie or something, but they, they treat it like a fruit. So, Maybe you didn't know that. Maybe you didn't know what rhubarb was. It's a very good, uh, it's, a, it's a great tasting food. If you haven't tried it, I would recommend it. Try it once or twice. Or in, Actually, in the stores, you can buy, in some stores, you can buy rhubarb stalks, okay? It's like they're red, they're probably like this long, and they're, they're like kind of a dark, kind of a, a reddish color. Now, who who eats rhubarb and who grows rhubarb? Well, if you go to farms here in Canada, anywhere across Canada, you you know you you'll probably probably on the farm they'll have a garden, right? Like most farmers are also gardeners. They'll plant to kind of have a nice garden. They might have some strawberries, some corn, some peas, beans, maybe some melons, maybe watermelons, or they might, they might have um, cucumbers, tomatoes, carrots, potatoes, but they will probably also have a big rhubarb plant somewhere in the garden or beside their house or something like that, right? So, so very often it's the rural people. Rural means outside of the city. Okay, they're not city people, they're more farm people, the rural areas. They are the ones to eat rhubarb more often. But even in cities, like I said, you can buy strawberry rhubarb pie or rhubarb jam. But the thing is, people won't grow rhubarb. They might, but um, like in Calgary, I don't know if I've ever seen people grow rhubarb in their yard. Maybe they do. I don't know. But it's more common on farms. Some people who live out in the countryside, right? So, um, guys, it's, it's, a great, it's a great fruit, if I can call it that. It's, a, it's delicious. It's kind of sour. It's uh, just nice, right? So I'm going to get my, uh, my warmed up uh, tea biscuits. Ooh, wow. Look at that. I mean, they were just sitting on top of the toaster and they actually got pretty toasted. Nice, eh? That's kind of cool. All right, so we're gonna put some butter on. We're gonna put some butter on them. And uh, let me know, have you ever had a tea biscuit? Oh, can you guys hear the kettle? It's whistling. All right, guys. Let's add our, let's add some hot water to our tea bag. What's your favorite kind of tea? Let me know down in the comments. I thought we should make some peppermint tea today because that's what I had. But um, what, what kind of tea do you like? Maybe you like plain, like just black, normal black tea, right? Now if you go to a, um, if you go to Tim Hortons, which is one of the, the, you know, the most, most popular coffee shops and, and restaurants, I guess it's kind of a coffee shop and restaurant. If you go to Tim Hortons here in Canada, 
and you want normal black tea, you'll see on the, the menu there, it's, it's called steeped tea. Okay, steeped tea. That's their normal black tea. Guys, I hear my, I hear my tea doing something. I'm not sure what that noise is. It's steeping, right? So the word steep means to kind of like brew. It's like, you know, we put the tea bag in, we added hot water. Now it's steeping, it means it's kind of getting ready. The tea is infusing into the water, right? Now, we only use the word steep with tea. We don't use the word steep with coffee, okay? So with coffee, it's kind of the same thing, right? You need the wa hot water and the coffee grounds, right? Now, if you make coffee in like a French press, which is one of those like things and you push down the, the thing and it kind of makes the coffee in there, that's called a French press. Um, the coffee's in there with the hot water, right? But that's not steeping. We don't use the word steep. We only use the word steep with tea. If it's for coffee, you, you say it's brewing or it's, um, it's percol percolating. Like if, it depends on how you make the coffee. Okay, so if it's in a French press, it would be like brewing and brewing some coffee. And also we use the word brew for other kinds of drinks like, like wine, no, not wine, beer. Um, I'm brewing beer. Beer is brewed, but wine is uh, aged or fermented or I don't know what the word is for wine. Aging, I think. You age, you age wine, but you brew beer and you brew coffee. Okay, so that's the most common word we use with, with, with coffee is brew, but with tea. And now you can also brew tea. Okay, so what's the difference between brew and steep? I don't know. I'm not an expert on this. I don't think there's a difference because right now we're brewing our tea. So you can say brew, I'm brewing tea, but you can also say the tea is steeping. Can you say I'm steeping tea? No, I think that's the difference. Okay, I just kind of discovered the difference. If you use the word steep, you're talking about what the tea is doing, okay? The, the tea is steeping. The tea is not brewing. Maybe you could say that. But, but for me, if I'm talking about me, I am brewing the tea. I'm not steeping the tea. But you could probably say that too. I'm steeping the, I don't know. But I think that's the difference, right? I brew, the tea steeps steeps for a few minutes. You know, most, most, um, if, if you look on the side of the, let's see what it'll say here. Brew, oh, it says brewing instructions. Okay, this is a good example here, guys. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. So, I'll just hold it really close up here, okay? Um, it says brewing instructions, okay? Uh, it says pour boiling water over the bag and let steep for three to five minutes. Serve clear. So there's both words right there on the instructions. Okay, so we're brewing the tea and it says let the tea steep. So we're letting it steep. Has it been five minutes? I don't know. Let's keep buttering our biscuit, right? So, butter. Oh no, my biscuit is falling apart, guys. Well, Get a little bit of butter on there anyway, and then we'll add our rhubarb jam, and then we'll be ready for our tea party. All right, so let's let's actually see what this rhubarb jam is like. Look at that, that is nice. It smells good. I am excited to hang out and have a tea party with you guys. Thank you for joining me. Hope you're learning some new vocabulary in these videos. Let me know if you learned some new words. I'd love to hear from you and uh, wish I could have you here in real life.
to eat these biscuits with me and to and to drink some tea. All right, so um, let's just pretend. We'll pretend you're here. I I like hanging out with you guys. It's fun. So thank you for joining me. All right, so there is a there's our our you know buttered and and jammed biscuit right there. And uh, so we've got some tea. I'll pour, I'll pour you a cup of tea first, all right? There's our steeped tea, look at that. Man. Ooh, guys, look at that tea. Oh, wow, that smells good. I love the smell of peppermint. All right, so there's your guys' tea, and this is my cup of tea here. Well, well, guys, thank you for joining me. I'll give you the first bite. You can tell me how it tastes, all right? Lost a little bit of the biscuit. Oh, that's good. That's just really good. Wow. Well, guys, there's a sip of your tea. And uh, I'll take that. Ooh, that's hot. There's no handles on these little cups. You have to grab the cup right by the rim, right by the edge. This little, this like thing around here that's called the rim. You have to grab the cup by the rim. Mmm, that's good. Oh, wow. This is great. Have you guys ever had a tea party before? Let me know if, if, if when was the last time you had a tea party? Because I'm sure when you were a kid, you must have had tea parties, right? I had tea parties when I was a kid. They were awesome. I love tea parties, but I think I, I don't think I've had a tea party for like 30 years or something like that. So it's about time. It is about time for a tea party, my friends. I love these biscuits and that rhubarb jam. Yeah, it's kind of sour, but kind of sweet. And it's just, it's just awesome. Mmm. Man, that is good. Wow. Well, guys, I don't know what else to say except thank you again. Thank you for joining me. I'll give you one last sip of your tea here before I bid you farewell. And uh, <clears throat> I'll scarf down this biscuit. To scarf down means to eat really quickly. If you scarf some food down, it's going to you just eat it really quickly. Another way you can say it is to wolf down. So scarf down and wolf down mean the same thing. You eat something just really quickly. Right? You don't almost don't even chew it. You just you just eat it and swallow it, right? So I'm gonna scarf down these uh, these uh, biscuits and finish up my tea. What a great party, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Guys, as always, I love you so much. I hope you're having a great day wherever you are. I hope you're staying safe, healthy, and happy. And as always, I'll see you over in the next episode of Mad English TV. Take care.